Because of the news over the weekend, Judge, and uh, uh, in particular, I'm talking about Brazil, that was pretty much a known. We knew that Bolsonaro was going to win. Um, however, the news that Angela Merkel is going to be stepping down sooner rather than later, that's a little more introducing a little more, uh, not so much fear, but uncertainty. Sweden, also a little <clears throat> more uncertainty. So if we had a static market over the weekend into today, I think we would have held 200 plus points instead of bleeding off to only holding 100 of them right now. And NASDAQ, as uh, John Ford said, I think going negative. I think we would do much better if indeed we had that static market. But we don't. The news isn't static. It's continuing to change. So do we get a little bit more of a push lower? Well, it sounds like we're going to test. Yeah. That's what it feels you still like. Got, you know, you got Amazon, as Carl mentioned, uh, giving up 1,600 first time since May. That stock's down 3.5%. That's why some of the tech stocks have started to weaken. Uh, Joe, weigh in on, on where we are because you have a couple of competing notes today that I, I found pretty interesting. This Goldman note, David Costin, mm -hmm. their chief market strategist, says sell offs overdone. Yes. That the, it's not relative to, uh, or at least relative to the fundamentals. Where, you know, Mike Wilson, Morgan Stanley, who's been on this desk and, and sat here last week, says bear case you're going to 2400 sell on rallies lack of liquidity yeah. buy the buy buy this now buy this big dip mm -hmm. or do you sell any rip well i said last week the the market continues to respond negatively to bad news and tends to dismiss good news and that's an environment which indicates to me that it leans towards what michael is saying which is you want to continue to sell rallies until the market can find some form of liquidity now that liquidity is going to come in the form of buybacks i believe that you would also believe that liquidity would come in the form of portfolio managers coming in to support risk assets. But keep this in mind. There was another note out today from J.P. Morgan. What they highlighted, that there is only three asset classes that are outperforming cash year to date. The Nasdaq, commodities, and U.S. leveraged loans. We haven't experienced that since 08 and the 70s. So in that environment, liquidity is not going to be rushing into the marketplace. Ultimately, the market's going to tell us when it's going to bottom. I think we all believe it is going to bottom, but it'll be the market that's going to dictate it based on how it trades and its performance. Okay, so Bryn, 2,400, estimates get cut, margins get cut, or 2,850, uh, if not higher than that, based on what are still good fundamentals, and maybe uh, you believe what, what we're experiencing is a growth scare rather than a real downturn of the economy of any magnitude. Yes, Scott, I think, I think to what, echo what Joe said, we really feel that when the negative, when markets sell off on the negative news and they're ignoring the positive news, we really feel sentiment has shifted. And I think you see that in Amazon, that Amazon was a fantastic company at 2000. It's a fantastic company today. But what happens is that positive sentiment comes out of these companies that have higher multiples. And then you see more stability in the apples and some of the lower Intel has held up really well to this market. But I think what's interesting and what we're telling our clients is that when you look at the sell-off as a whole, since 1980, the S&P's averaged about 9.5%. The average intra-year peak to trough decline, so the high to low inside of each year, has averaged 13.8% per year. And so although volatility is uncomfortable, clients need to be comfortable with that uncomfortable sense of where markets are. But we really feel, we really feel that we're going to rally from here, and this is more of a scare or a cold, not the flu.